My name is Madison and I'm in Wheaton College's Fab Lab right now. Today we're going to go through a mold making and casting process that will result in a silicone mold that you can use to cast with resin and a variety of other materials. This tutorial is meant for absolute beginners, but know that the context of a makerspace or a fab lab would be super helpful, or maybe a little bit of experience with some of the other tools and materials we're gonna dive into. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna use Tinkercad as our computer-aided design software. And if you know another CAD software like Fusion 360 and you feel comfortable with that, I definitely recommend using it. But I'm gonna show you how to use Tinkercad to do this process. So if you don't have an account already, you should create an account. It's free and great community, uh, lots of resources to help you learn this software. So once you've created an account, I'm going to show you the basics of Tinkercad because we need some kind of foundational knowledge before we can get to making our molds. Um, so this is our work plane. Right now I'm zooming in and out. So just try doing that. And then you can change your perspective by holding down the right side of your mouse or for trackpad users, I think it's like pressing with two fingers. Um, I can also in the upper left hand corner, I can kind of go over here and click around on this box to change my perspective as well. So let's say I get really turned around. I always have the comfort of this home button and that'll get me recentered. So, a few things to orient, orient you. Uh, so our work plane's here, and this is where we can imagine like our object is gonna be 3D printed. On the left, we have some kind of zoom in tools. We got the home tool, this um, box tool to change our orthogonal perspective. Um, and on the right, we have tons of different forms that we can choose from. And if you click on this right here, there's even more. And there's just like really cool um, pre-made components here that are fun to explore and, and learn how to use. Um, so, to get started, let's just bring a box onto our work plane. And let's grab uh, one of these white squares on the box and just kind of play around with changing the size. Okay. Now, let's say we want to undo that. So if you are using um, a Mac, you could do Command Z to undo that, or you could use Control-Z if you're a Windows user. Uh, you can also just hit this undo button right over here. So we just changed the size of this, but like, what if I want to change the size proportionately? What I can do is hold Shift on my keyboard, then select one of these points, and now increase and decrease. And now I'm maintaining those proportions continuously. All right, and notice I just clicked over here on my work plane, and it deselected my box. So to select my box again, I have to click on the box. What if we want to just increase the height of our box? We're gonna click on this right here to do that. Okay, um, so now let's play around with making a hole in an object. Okay, so let's say I wanna put a hole in this box. I'm gonna bring over um, this cylinder and I'm gonna make it super tall and I'm gonna get a little bit skinnier. And then I'm gonna come over here and click on the whole button. And now it has this like grayed out kind of um, transparent look to it. So this is cool. What if I now wanna make the hole in the absolute center of my box? I'm gonna select everything and you can do that by dragging this kind of like red perimeter around your objects, or you can press Command A or Control A. And then I'm gonna go to Align. The Align tool is fantastic for bringing things kind of together so that they're centered and on the, the right axis. So I'm gonna click on this one. I'm gonna rotate. I'm gonna click on the one that's in the center over here. And now it's in the middle, at least um, on my X and Y planes. It's not on the Z though, so how do we do that? That button right there, that black one in the middle, now it's fully XYZ centered, okay? Um, so again, I'm gonna Command A to select all, group up here, and when we group two objects, it brings them together, and because we have a hole and a solid, now this has a hole inside of it, okay? Um, so if I went a little too fast for you right there, then just 
try it yourself a few times and get used to some of the, the mechanics of Tinkercad. All right, so I actually don't need this. That was just a quick little tutorial for the super beginners out there. And what we're gonna be creating for this mold is essentially like a cavity for us to pour the silicone and then the positive like of our shape. All right, so to kind of clarify the process, what we're 3D modeling in Tinkercad right now is this kind of 3D printed model, right? So this is what I, these two shapes right here in the middle, this is what I want my earring to look like. And this cavity surrounding it is intended so that I can pour the silicone mold making material into it. So once I pour the silicone mold making material into it and it dries, it turns out like this. From there, so this is my mold. We don't really need this anymore unless we're gonna make more molds. So once I have my mold, um, which is really fantastic, it's super strong, has really high tear strength, I then pour the resin and make the earrings. So right now we're designing this to ultimately get to this. And the first thing that we're gonna do is model that cavity that we just talked about. So let's grab a box from over here, and this is gonna be the outer perimeter of the cavity. And I kind of have a general idea of what our dimensions may need to be, but these are probably gonna change later depending on your actual design. So if we click and kind of hover, then these numbers pop up. We are in millimeters right now, and you can see that down here. You could change it if you want to. I'm gonna stay in millimeters, and I'm gonna change this to 80. And I'm gonna change this one to 80 as well. And I'm also gonna change the height of my box. So to change the height, I can click here, and I'm gonna change the height to 25. Cool. And that's really all I need to do for this right now. Let's get the shape that we're going to create the cavity out of. So if I go over here to basic shapes into this drop down menu, and then I go to shape generators featured, actually shape generators all. And I think it's kind of like further down here, but it's one of the trapezoids. Yeah, so let's use the double trapezoid. And over here, I can actually input all of these dimensions that I want. So why are we using a trapezoid? So what we're about to do is we're gonna flip this trapezoid so that the top is bigger and the base is smaller. The reason we do that is because if we just have a box within a box creating that cavity and we have the 90 degree angle, when we then pour in the silicone, it's gonna be harder to get out. So if we have a little bit of an angle, it'll be an easier release. Okay, so let's change those. So we'll have our base width be 65. This can be 65 too. And then we'll have our top be 70. And we'll have our height actually stay 20. And it may take a second for all that to happen. But right there you can see like the difference. So here we have that slight angle and here it's still a right angle. All right. Now what I'm going to do is make this a hole and we're going to use that align tool again. So I'm going to press command A to select all. I'm going to come over to my align tool and I want to align it over here. I want to align it over here and I want to align it to the top. So now I can see it right there. And I'm just gonna do a quick check to make sure this looks good, it does. And just clicked away, Command A again to select all, group. Okay, so it should come out looking something like this. Okay, this is pretty good, this is what we want. So we've designed this box and this cavity, we can move it to the side and now I can focus on our earring. So with the earring process um, or with whatever object you want to design, there's just like so many resources and so many cool forms in here that you can use. And I'm going to probably look around for a little bit and come up with something, but this is a very creative process and it's totally up to you what you want to design. So I'm just going to show you like one process of maybe how I would do it.
All right, so the last thing that you wanna do is group your object. The only dimension I really paid attention to uh, when I was doing this was my height, which I set at 17. But when we bring it over into this, this is a really good um, way to think about like size and just make sure you're not printing earrings that are like totally massive. Um, so you can bring it over here and then it's like, oh, this is a little too big for me to fit inside this cavity. So I could make this bigger, but I am just gonna resize the earrings a little bit. When I do that, it's gonna change the height. So I'll need to reset it because I kind of want these to both fit. So I'm gonna hold shift so that it's changing size proportionately. And then I'm gonna Command C to copy, Command V to paste, and see if I can get these both in the cavity. And it's still a little tight. So what I'm gonna do is just change this cavity. And right now I'm gonna change it and I'm not gonna hold shift because I don't wanna change it proportionally. So I'm just gonna move it over here, get my earrings where I want them, yeah, and that looks good. And now I'm gonna rechange. So this changed to 13.73, but it needs to be 17. So I'm gonna re-enter that so that these are still the right height. Good. And now I'm going to make sure that these are both in a good spot. Yeah. And make this a little bit closer on both sides. Okay, and this looks really good. Now what I can do, I just wanna make sure when I go in here and just like double check and make sure everything is like touching this and it is, um, if it wasn't touching, you would have, when you go to print this, it would like totally fail. Um, so this looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is group it. Okay, so at this point you could be done, but there's one more thing that we're gonna do to make sure that we know whose earrings these are. So if we go over here to text, maybe the date, whatever you wanna put, um, and then you can even change the font. And essentially with this, you just wanna make sure it's legible from the bottom, not the top. So I'm going to flip this, and I'm gonna make it a hole, and kind of put it under here, what I can do is use that align tool to make sure it's like actually in the middle. Now I just wanna make sure I can see it. Yeah, so there it is at the bottom and it's not coming through up here because if I like move this down, right now it's coming through. We don't want that. So we want it to just barely be there and I can read it from the bottom so it's probably good to go. Command A, group, okay. So this is kind of what you want your design looking like. Next, upper left-hand corner, there is this like random name generator that's always kind of hilarious. So put your name and maybe like what it is. From there, one more step, you're gonna export it. And just like there's PDFs and JPEGs and docs, we export these as STLs. STL stands for stereo lithography, and it's kind of like the industry standard file name for things that we can like 3D print and fabricate. So STL, it's gonna export, and now we're ready to move on to 3D printing. Crazy.
TikTok is my favorite part. Let's count the ways we could make this last forever. Sunny, money, keep it funky, touch your top it, let it down. Of your baby, pink like the walls in.